Hey, what's up everybody? Damien here with ReSolutions. Today's video is a follow-up from the best photo shoot setup for 2024 that fits small budgets and small spaces. My goal is to show you how to use it properly so that you can shoot more, so you can list more and make more money. Let's get to it. As any good chef knows, mise en place is a must before you complete any task. This is Charlie and that's his place. <laughs> like I said, everything in its place. Let's start with this. This is the background. I opened the door because I, I put it behind the door to save space. That's the point of this, right? And before I show you, I'm going to answer a question that somebody asked me. They asked me, why don't you, why don't you have a dedicated setup? I could easily put that leaned on the wall, right? So it can be all nice and pretty and always here so that I don't have to take it out. But why would I do that? I don't have space. Therefore, I can still keep the shelf with a testing area, a book area, things that need to be uh, temperature controlled, Amazon product and tools. And I still can shoot the product. So we're gonna open this up. We're gonna lean it right here. We're gonna grab our string, grab our hanger. And before we do anything else, you need lighting. The light is right up here. And we're gonna turn it on, there we go. Now you just gotta center this as best as possible. And before we go, the video, if you guys haven't seen the video of how to build this, I'm gonna link it down below and I'm gonna also put it up here somewhere. Along with all the links so that you can buy whatever you need so that you can build your own. This is a great way to save money, save space, and still have great looking shots. And that's the point of this. Okay, another couple of things that you need. We need a ruler because we're gonna take a lot of measurements. We need the product which came out of that closet. I'm not gonna show you because I already set it up, but long sleeves, short sleeves, polos, and t-shirts. And you always spread them or you split them depending on type of garment. Long sleeve with long sleeves, short sleeve with short sleeve, polo with polo, and so on. The reason you do that is because you don't wanna waste time. You don't wanna shoot a long sleeve and then a short sleeve and then whatever, and you don't wanna mix them. Once you download the pictures and you have them on the computer, they're all gonna to be together. So you're gonna do all the long sleeves, you're gonna do all the short sleeves, and so on. As simple as that. Mind you, I do recommend these. If you guys have metal shelves or somewhere where you can actually use these, the S-hooks, S-hooks are super awesome. These S-hooks, they're very simple, it's just an S-hook, but look, once I hang it right there, it holds about maybe six garments. So I can put six, 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 so everything's gonna be ready to go for that day. Couple of other things that we need. Well, we need to make sure that we don't step on Charles right here because he's asleep. And then we gotta put these inventory labels on here. You can use them however you want, but I put them on here because I got them from this paper. If you notice, I do have a printer right here that does thermal printing, and these are the labels. I'm using this because I bought, I, I have a pack of, of these stickers that I got from an estate sale for like a quarter. So instead of throwing them away or never using them, I'm gonna use them. So I printed from 0001 to 1000. So I'm gonna do 1000 items and see how long these last. After that, we gotta set up our station right here. First of all, it's gotta be clean. Before we even started shooting, I already sprayed it down and I cleaned it to make sure that nothing gets dirty. You don't wanna dirty your product. Second, you gotta make sure that you have things like scissors. This is a pointer. It's an awesome pointer, by the way. Just got it in a state so for a quarter. This is a pointer, or what I use as a pointer when I'm shooting. If I wanna point at a stain or a tear or whatever, I just use this. We have pens and a couple of other items. We also have, this is super important. This tape right here signifies my size of bag, 15 by 10 bag. Whenever I fold the product down, and you'll see that later, it's gotta fit in between here. If it fits in between here, it'll fit in the bag. That way the bag can be folded neatly and go into the inventory system. And this is the bag. These bags I buy from Mexico, and they are 2.2 pounds. I buy them by the kilo, or 2.2 pounds. Yes, you can buy U-line bags that have the little tape and it's all neat and it's all pretty, but they are way more expensive. I get these for nothing because I get to import them from Mexico. Uh, that's just one of, the, one of the perks of living by the border and having family in Mexico. It's great. So I'm gonna put that bag away. And then now we are pretty much ready to go. 
So let's get this done. Okay, before I start hanging the clothes and taking the pictures, you gotta set up your phone. And I set up my phone to do the best job possible for me so it can make it easier. And that's why I recommend this. Look at this thing. You put this right here, just put it on the back of the case, open the bottom, and take that little metal thing out. If I can actually do it, there you go. You put the phone back in, make sure that it sits properly and it's ready, ready to go. And then you clip this on. This is, look at this thing, this is so cool and it helps a ton. You probably, if you guys saw my other video, you would have seen me do this already. But look, now it's gonna hang here all the time so it can be easier, you know, so you can take pictures. And I will say the same thing that I said on the first video. For those of you that are guys that are shooting this, be careful with your nuts because trust me, ah, okay, I wasn't actually gonna hit myself, but it'll hurt. Shirt, these are, these hangers are not for shooting. And don't use <laughs> hangers. Get a, get some money and get good hangers like that one. We're gonna take this hanger off. I'm gonna put this right here. Okay, and if, if you guys don't know, don't stretch the collar. Just take the button off, even if it takes you a, uh, one more second. The best thing about using a string like this and a wooden hanger is this. When you do that, a lot of the wrinkles go away. Just awesome. I'm gonna show you roughly what I do for every photo. In this case, this has a flip cuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show as much of the product as possible on the front page. So this is the main shot. And the reason you wanna do that is because you want the customer to, you wanna grab their attention as best as you can. And showing them the most detail is how you're gonna do that so that they can click on your listing. Once you put all the buttons where they need to go, these are tough because they're, they're hand sewn and they're just bigger buttons, but I got it. Okay, now we're gonna fold this one in. So let me give you the reasoning behind this. My shirts are always like this. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, it shows the elbow part. If there's an elbow patch or something like that, it shows the back side, which has your buttons. And then that side shows the flip cuff or the front side of the sleeve. And then of course you have your buttons. Everything else is regular, right? And then, well, we're gonna button this one right here because he's not that ghetto. I mean, the shirt is ghetto, but he's not that ghetto. So we're gonna button him up to right there. This is Rebel Spirit. <laughs> By the way, this is an ugly, ugly shirt, but these shirts make money. So that's why we're taking the pictures. Okay, this is as best as, we, as best as we can put it, right? All right, as best as we can put this down. There you go. There are gonna be some wrinkles. Don't be a perfectionist. The, the whole point is to move fast. So now we're gonna do this. I'm gonna set up the camera. Make sure the camera's in square mode as always because square mode is what eBay recognizes so that you don't have to be editing all the time. If you do it 16 by nine, which is wide or tall, then you're gonna have to do a lot of editing. You don't wanna do that. So put it on square mode. We're gonna do the main photo first. If it's too bright because that's a black shirt, just try to match up whatever's on the screen to whatever your eye sees. So in this case, I'm gonna click on it. It's too bright. I'm gonna lower the brightness. I'm gonna make sure that I get all the sleeves in the sleeve right there and then the other side and take the picture. Remember, this is your edge. You don't wanna take anything further that way or anything further this way because that's gonna give you more work. You're gonna to have to edit, edit, edit and you don't wanna do any of that. So that's the first picture, right? Now, what do we take? They would wanna see the buttons. So we're gonna do sleeve, we're gonna do cuff, we're gonna do that chest plate right there because look at that, that's, if anybody was gonna buy this, it's probably because of the dragon. So there you go. We also take a picture of this and you can spread it out. I mean, since you already took the main shot, you can open this like this. You can open it like that and then take the picture. Try not to get your hands in it whenever possible because it's unnecessary. We take the, now we go back to the label because they need to know what it is and what it's made of it's not up there. So now we have to find it. It's right here. 97% uh, cotton, 3% spandex right there. And one other thing that people do want to know is that if it has extra buttons in case they lose one. So if it has extra buttons, shoot the button. Now, oh, one other, I forgot one other thing right here. That's an additional uh, cool piece of information that they would want. They want to see um, zoomed in. So now we flip it over. 
And the cool thing about this is that, look, this is why you use the string. It flips over easily. We shake it, and then we put it down. Now we don't have to show the flip cuff. And this picture, it's not gonna be as perfect as the front one because it is unnecessary. They already pretty much saw the shirt. If they're looking at the backside, all they wanna see is that there is no issues with it. And if there's a big print like that one, so we're gonna take the large print, we're gonna lower the brightness. We're gonna zoom in on this print. I think it's velvet, by the way. Okay, we're gonna zoom in, maybe this one. Now they have a good sense of what it actually looks like. But what is the most important thing that people wanna know? Does it fit? Because I can buy whatever shirt and if it doesn't fit, they're not gonna wear it. So we go at the neckline all the way down. I use a yardstick. People use all types of rulers and this is just easy, look at this. I just hold it right there and I take a picture of this area. You don't have to take the whole shirt. You don't have to tape it and take it from back there. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. They just want to know the length of it. Now we're going to do pit to pit right there. May remember to stretch it out and we're not going to use, we're not going to take a picture of that. We're going to take a picture of the end. So that doesn't matter. Just make sure you stretch it out right there. And we're going to take a general photo. So you're going to take about this much right here. If you take only this, then they might not know what picture this belongs to. So you, they got to know the area. So they're going to see the sleeve back so they know it's a pit. There are a bunch of other pictures that I've seen people take. Oh, the sleeve and then the cuff and bro, unnecessary. I've had maybe two questions out of two or 300 garments that I've sold in the last couple of months about extra or additional uh, measurements. That and that, that's all you need. Okay. Now you're done with this. What's next? Take it off of the hanger. Make sure you unbutton it because you're, you don't want to stretch the neckline. And now when my cameraman moves, thank you. We're going to go this way. Remember, this is the, the tag for the inventory, but we're not there yet. And I'll show you why. And I'll show you why. We lay this down and you fold this as neatly as, neatly as possible. And I'll give you two reasons for that. I've seen people just, they, they do this and they're like, oh, whatever. No, not whatever. You want to fold it how people are going to receive it because you don't want to touch it after it's in the bag. Unless somebody asks you for more information, you're not going to touch the garment. So you fold it into like this and fold it down, fold it across, fold the sleeve down. There's other ways to do this, but what you want is to end up looking like that and i'll give you a reason for that when somebody opens the bag they're gonna see this when you go to when you go to a store like when you go to the mall and you look at tables what do you see they're they're folded like that because they're pretty so that's what you want the customer to see when they take it out of the bag do you don't want a, a balled up mess you don't want it to look like shit because then you are you're not doing yourself justice and you're not doing justice to the garment. So make sure that it's as neat as possible. And in this case, look, it's a little wide because that's the end of the bag. So try to get it as close as possible, but this is fine because it's not a thick garment, so it'll be okay. Now let me grab the bag. Look at this. I'm going to grab a bag. We're going to open it. I do that every time because it's disgusting. Don't do that, by the way. I was just kidding. Nobody, it, nobody's bought this yet. Put this in here. You can pinch it like this because it, it makes it easier for you to put it in the bag. You fold it down, make it as flat as possible. And this is the reason why I said stay in the measurement. Oops. Stay within the measurements because if you stay within the measurements, you don't have problems like this. But look, now all you fold over the top, tape it. You're almost done. Now we go into the next number of the inventory system. You have you noticed it's three, uh, 0347, 348 and on. Because that's what I'm going to shoot today. I'm actually going to shoot more than that, but that's what I put up. So grab this one. Put it right here. And you take the final picture. You can do this. That final picture is not for the customer. It's only for you. 
don't show them inventory uh, inventory tags. Don't show them. They don't care about any of that. They just care about the garment. That is for you. When you sit down and you're going to list, you're going to know that this shirt that has the dragon on it is 347. Now you come over here. This is the box that it fits in. And tag looks neat right there. And that's it. That is the pretty much the entire process. Now it's just got to go to inventory, but that's the entire process. So I'm going to do this without talking, without doing anything else. I'm just going to go and see how long it actually takes. No lies. Maybe. <laughs> go. That took longer than normal. It's three minutes and 27 seconds. And that is because this garment has the flip cuff, all the additional photos that say this one is not gonna have. On average, I can tell you right now that it takes me anywhere from about a minute and a half for something like this, which is a t-shirt, to about three to three and a half minutes for something like that. And I do work, I mean, I don't work that, that fast, Sometimes I'm watching videos or like uh, my iPad is usually here and I'm watching something. So I, I, I'm a little more chill, but I just wanted to go, go, go. So I think I still did pretty good. So if you, if you do the math on average, let's just call it two minutes and 30 seconds. So if I do two minutes and 30 seconds or two minutes for easy math, how many garments can you get in an hour? That's 30 garments in one hour. Even if, if you do three minutes, how many garments in an hour? That's 20 garments in an hour. So if you do a five hour day, that's a hundred garments in an hour. If those garments can bring you, if any of those items can give you a $10 profit, uh, each item, that's a thousand dollars that you can make in a day, considering that they all sell. But you know what I mean? That's pretty damn good. Great business here. You have just witnessed how the best photo setup for 2024 works for small budgets and small spaces. If you like this video, hit the like button, share this video with anybody that needs to see it and consider subscribing so you can see more pro tips like this. And if you don't know how to build the setup, I have a video in the description below. If not, I'm gonna link it up here so that you can go there, watch it. And I also have all the links at the bottom so you can just buy everything and build it like that so you can start making more money. We'll see you in the next one. Peace! Chef knows mise en place is definitely key. No, why did I change it? Why? Hold on. Ah, shit, the light.